It's always exciting buying a new car. It was exciting for me four months ago when I bought this and I didn't want to film the first video on it until I found a few parts that I could start repairing this thing with. And that's been the struggle with this car. You see, I've always wanted to own, I've always wanted to work on, and I've always wanted to drive one of these cars, and I still yet never have. In fact, I actually bought one not too long ago, and it didn't turn out as planned. The video's in the top right-hand corner. I'm hoping this one will turn out a little bit different, but unfortunately, four months have passed, and still nothing has happened. But let me show you guys what I'm working with and whether possibly any of you could help me with this one. I really want this car for myself as a daily driver, but it's just not looking that way at the moment. Say hello to my 2012 brand new second hand C63 W204. I can do it up in my seat. Show us how to change when the money came. Money paying him, getting money back. Need a money counter for the money, eh? No, I need you, so don't you run away. Oh, and hasn't this car got a story to tell? I bought this car solely with my heart and not really with my head. On first thoughts, it doesn't actually look too bad, but we'll get into that. But first, let me run you through this model and why exactly I chose to buy it. So first things first, this is a 2012 C63. So that means it's the facelift model. The facelift one comes with these sort of headlights on the front as opposed to the non-facelift version. Well, this headlight, there's only one of them at the minute. And also I think Mercedes did a few touches to the engines because I'm sure they had like a common problem with the head bolts going on and people had to replace them with aftermarket ones because they used to lift the head. Is, is that right, maybe? Now the first one of these I bought, which was actually for Hannah, was a coupe. Whereas this one is a saloon. I figured we've already got the RS5 which is a coupe and the saloon would just be a much better daily for me and plus I couldn't find a crash damage coupe. I'm pretty sure these are standard on the C63, these huge six pot calipers with a drilled and brake disc and these alloys which actually for some reason seem to look in half decent condition. No cracks and the tyres are still inflated which kind of is suspect. The interior is all black leather and it's probably the best for sort of daily driving. Nowadays this Mercedes cockpit area is fairly dated comparing to what they're doing nowadays. And if you compare a 2012 Audi RS5 cockpit, I think Audi well and truly outdid Mercedes that year. But I didn't buy the C63 for the interior. I bought it because of this. Hey, all of those dark nights I got there, breaking my back to make it out, got me feeling like rain. I ain't never need your help, I know you wishing me well, a penny for your touch, but seeing no change. The 6.2 naturally aspirated V8 engine. What an engine this thing is, or was. These roll straight out of the factory with 450 bhp and 600 newton meters of torque, and all that power goes straight to the rear wheels. And that's partly why the car has ended up in this shape, and quite a lot of them have ended up in this shape you just get so much power sent to these rear wheels and if you're not that experienced of a driver well it ends up like that <laughs> and a few more things i noticed about this particular model it's got electric seats and it's got harman Kardon sound system i think that's how you pronounce it and also an absolute belter of a sunroof come on i'm so tired of second guessing myself had to reevaluate, you know check on my health now the prices of these c63s have fluctuated massively a brand new one of these in 2012 according to google would have cost you £56,210. But as he's got a few years old and out of warranty, these cars become really expensive to run. So the price of them went way down. But as for a year ago or a few years back, you probably could have picked one of these up for under £20,000. But now, like a lot of used cars, the price is going back up. And there we have a brief but informative lesson about the C63 AMG. Well done, man. That, that was really good. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Shall we now tell them about this particular C63 model? I think we shall. Now, as I've bought one of these before, I didn't want to make the same mistake again. So the first thing I did was check this car out on Car Vertical, who has sponsored today's video. Car Vertical is currently working in over 20 different countries. And it's helped me make the decision when buying cars like this, like this, and like that. 
<laughs> it gathers data from various national registries, car insurance databases, car crash auction websites, and so on. Let's take a look at the report for the C63. I can see one amber light for mileage fraud and one amber light for an accident. As I scroll through the report, I can see all the MOT history and when number plates have even been changed. Now I can see here on the mileage graph, there's a little dip in the report, but this just could have been a mistake of someone inputting it incorrectly as the rest of the years do all line up, but it's something I could look out for. As I scroll down, I can see when it was reported damaged as well. And on some reports like this, it'll even show me photos of the damage. And just so you've seen a good report, here's a report on my E46 M3. You can see everything is all green. It's HBR clear, no damages or mileage alterations. So to check your car, a friend's car, or a car that you're potentially about to buy, click the link in the description box below. And with help from my link, you're gonna save yourself 10%. Thanks Car Vertical for sponsoring this video and also helping me out when making these rest decisions. Now crash damage cars have a lot of character and they always have a really good story to tell. And it's my favorite part of it, trying to work out what exactly has happened to this car to end up in this way. Now looking at the car, clearly it's missing half of its front end. And while it doesn't stop there, a lot of the damage runs along this side and then also a lot of it on this side as well. Now the C63 that I got caught out on before was in a much worse accident than the first thought. And when I first got the C63, my first initial thought was, oh no, the same thing has happened again. The crash bar is all intact, yet half the front end is missing and it's got some serious front end damage. But when I looked at it a little bit closer, it wasn't actually necessarily the case. This is definitely the bonnet that was involved in the accident. I can see the scratches along here, which we'll get onto, they run on along the bonnet. And then the crash bar here, it is cracked, it is damaged on this side and uh, well this oil cooler on the side has taken a huge hit along with all this wheel as well as a lot of stuff on the inside there which we'll get onto. As for the headlight and the front bumper, they're in no man's land, God knows where they are. So moving on from that, I can see that it's taken a fair bit of hit on this side and this is the engine oil cooler which means half the oil, well all of the oil from the engine is now, well, not in the engine. Now moving on from the engine oil cooler, this is the trans transmission oil cooler, which again, is as good as a write-off. Joining on from the transmission cooler, you've got the radiator, the aircon condenser, and the power steering cooler. And the only thing that looks sort of intact is the actual power steering cooler. Everything else, well, it's taken a fair bit of hit and it's definitely gonna need replacing. As you can see, this engine has got zero oil in it at all. There's absolutely nothing. And also there's very little coolant, if any, in there as well. So with this car having no oil and next to no coolant in it, this car was bought as a non-runner, which is a massive risk in itself, as these engines, they're not cheap. Passenger side wing is damaged, driver side wing is damaged, passenger side side skirt damaged. There are these crazy scratches all along the passenger side, which are really, really deep. Driver side window is no longer. The windscreen is no longer. And the passenger side window is no longer. Steering wheel airbag's gone. Knee airbag's gone. Driver's seat airbag, well, that's gone. And the rear seat belts, well, <laughs> they're gone. But wait, there's more. Now, in the four months that I've had this car, I've not had the C63 in the Ram at all. It stayed here, but looking underneath, there is huge damage to the subframe at the front there. And also at the back, I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see that, there's a big dent in the sump and it's actually leaking oil from there. I don't think the dent is big enough to have caused any damage to the actual bottom end of the engine, but who knows. Now this wheel is the reason why this car is a nightmare to move around anywhere. There's supposed to be a control arm connecting from here on the hub to that part of the subframe and then also on the front, this control arm here which connects to there, I think the bolt is just snapped because that is just wobbling around everywhere. Now the insurance has categorized the car as a category S which means structural damage, which nowadays could mean anything from a bolt on to bolt off repair to a cut off and weld back on repair. But with it being a category S, it means that it can be put back on the road safely. And inside here is probably the reason why it is a category S. The wheel has actually hit the chassis here and it's well, it's caused a fair amount of damage to this part of the chassis. So at some point I will have to get this on the jig just to make sure it is straight. But I'll tell you why I'm not too worried about it. Everything along this side of the car here still looks in line. Even this damaged wing, the panel gap on the door to the wing still looks fine. The door, the door gap still looks fine. And when you open the door, it doesn't drop 
at all. It literally just opens and closes as it should, even down to the rear passenger door. Everything looks all sort of in line, bar that front wheel. There's also some good news as well. The passenger side airbag is not deployed, which means we don't necessarily have to change the whole dashboard just to do that knee bag. But the real question is, is how on earth did a C63 end up like this? I am gonna say sorry as well. I know you guys like watching my videos for me rebuilding stuff and there's a lot of talking in this video, but I'll explain why that's gonna be really hard in a minute. Now under investigation, the only conclusion that I've came up with is that this was a joyride, maybe a police chase. Hmm. And uh, and why do you think that? Ah, you see, with these high power cars, it makes it quite desirable for a thief to have a nice fun night, maybe joyriding, getting a little bit sideways, and maybe getting in a chase with the police. And this is why I kind of think it's been in a police chase. Now you see this little bit of blue tape here. This is actually police tape, crime investigation tape. So this probably was done by the police, whether it's been crashed in the side of a ditch or the police have got to the scene. Well, I think the police have actually got to the scene when the car has been crashed and here's why. So under inspection, the passenger side window is broken. The driver's side window is also broken. Hmm. And this windscreen smash isn't caused by a blown airbag as usual. This is definitely somebody's head. So what are you trying to say then? Why do you think this has been in a police chase or has been stolen? Ah, you see, so with the driver's side window being smashed and the passenger side window being smashed, it's quite an unusual thing. I've never really seen it before, but my only theory, the windows have been smashed from the outside, I think. Now with the passenger side window being smashed and the driver's side window being smashed and someone's head hitting the windscreen, they probably weren't wearing a seatbelt and if the window's been smashed, they're wanting to get these people out quick. So whether it was the fire department getting maybe the rightful owner out or more than likely somebody who has joyrided this car. That's my sort of theory behind this whole thing. Hmm. Actually, it probably isn't far off. That being the right theory. Either that or the last owner just sort of lacked in talent. I mean, the driver's side and the passenger side window are smashed. And I assume that there's been no seatbelt worn by the driver, being that his head has probably hit directly into there. And if you're a careful owner and a careful driver of a C63, I think the last thing that you're going to be doing is driving fast without your seatbelt on. Or at least I think. Now let me explain why I've had this car for four months and I'm only filming a video on it now and I've not even touched it. And the quick answer for that would be the parts. With less and less of these C63s actually being on the road, there is less and less second-hand parts which are available for this thing. The first thing I wanna do is check the engine is okay. To check the engine is okay, I gotta put oil in it. To put oil in it, I'm gonna need an oil cooler and a sump as well. The sump is completely battered and it's just leaking oil. Then I wanted to check whether the chassis was straight. To do this, I'm gonna need a subframe, a new subframe frame that I can bolt on just to see if it lines up with all the holes in the chassis. And damn it, I can't even find a second hand bonnet, never mind all of those other things. Now I got the C63 at a very good price and let's say if this video gets 10,000 likes, I'll tell you that price. And knowing how hard it is to actually grab used parts of this car, I'll probably make my money back and probably more from just breaking the good parts which are on this car. Well, there's not many, but there is enough. But I didn't buy this car to break it and I'm determined to fix it. I really want to own and drive and modify a C63 there's so many things that you can do to them. I got nothing to worry about when you're by my side. Which is why I'm asking for your guys' help on this. If we can find parts for this, I'm gonna fix it. Well, at least I'm gonna try. So I've set up an email address, so if you guys have any parts for a C63 that it looks like I may need, you can email it. The email address is on the screen right now. So I'm really sorry, most of this video is talking, but I really wanted to share with you guys my sort of predicament with this C63, and hopefully I can get your guys' help on this. But if you've stuck around to the end and you really wanna see the C63 back on the road, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button, Thank you so much for all of your guys' support, and I guess I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.